So if you please, if you could start, but, but uh, tell me your name and uh, where you're from, and just saying that we have permission to, re to record this. Okay. Name Wayne Watson. I'm from Monroe, Georgia. I left here in San Diego. I've come back in 93. Okay. And y'all got permission to record. Right. So if you could just tell me the um, one by one the names of the people that you, that you know are still alive, their approximate age, um, and and uh, what you know about their involvement on the bridge uh, in 1946 with the uh, lynching on the Morse Ford Bridge. Okay, Charlie Pepper, that's my uncle, and he ought to be about 85 or 86. He was the youngest one in the family. And all through my life, all I heard them talk about the Moors Board and the lynching and stuff, and I lived around it in Campton. And I come back in 93, I started hanging around them. I said, I'm going to see what I can do about all this. And every day I made documents. I wrote it down, and he talked about how the woman up there, he was laughing. He said, well, the people thought the woman was pregnant by a black man. So the husband was in the military, and she was pregnant by a white man. And he said, Wayne, well, they cut the baby out, washed the baby off in the creek, and put it up for a doctor in line. I said, no, they didn't either. He said, yes, they did. So you don't call me a blank, blank liar unless you was there like I was. Who was the white man that she was reportedly had the affair with, whose, whose baby she had? Hester. It was Hester. He's, uh, he told me... What's, I'll get the what's Hester's first name? I think it's Barry. Barry. Okay. okay. But uh, Lord and, 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 and he's from Hester Town, is that right? Right, yes. And, um, who else is still is still living besides Mr. Pepper? You've got a number of them. I've got another uncle named Earl Rolster. He's a member of the clan. you got... Um, the he, members, all and, and, and Mr. Royster, and that's R O Y S T E R. Yes, sir. Uh, Earl he, Royster. He, um, you said he's a, a member of the clan, and he was also on the bridge that night. Right, because uh, he's about the same age, my uncle Charlie. Okay. He's my uncle too. And you got a lot of them back in '93 when I come here. You had a bunch of them still alive, and everything like John F. Moore, Jack Smith, uh, Bree Love, Iron Bree Love. Uh, these men used to talk about it? They was in a meeting. I remember them years ago when people talked about who was all the members and that thing. The, um, what, what kind of meeting? They had a KKK meeting at the courthouse. A lot of people don't understand. When that torch got lit, the KKK lit it. But they end up putting that other stuff on it to cover up for what they've done. They had an a election where you join a membership tribe and that thing. And back then, I remember Frank and Thornton, uh, Sorrell, you know, Ronnie Sorrell, all of them there. I record, remember the boys said because it's in my head, and I think Neil Jackson, uh, Harry Arnold, Senior. Uh, so Jimmy Davis lived over there in Madison. He's still alive. He walk, runs a pawn shop, and he got a patch over his eye. His name is uh, Jimmy Madison? Davis. He, he works G at Madison. Okay, uh, Jimmy Davis. Right. The town of Madison. He works at the pawn shop. And he works at a pawn shop. Do you, do you, do you know the name of the pawn shop? Uh, it's right there like going to Edenton, uh, Everton. It's on the left back in the shopping center. All right, uh, which road is that shopping center on? I don't know what name that highway. I just know direction from that. I got you. Uh, you said that he has a patch over his eye? Right. Is that Highway 441? He goes to the back to I-20. Okay. Highway 441 hmm. runs from Madison to Edington. Uh, you know where you, you go to Madison, you take a ride, and then you go out, you stay on that road and go to the hospital. Right? You bear off to okay. your left right there. You go by the high That's 278. Mile. 278, right. And yeah, that's a, Highway 278. There's a tire center right there on your left, and then there's a pawn shop right down on your left. That's Highway 278. And there's a there's a man there with a patch over his eye named Jimmy Davis. Right. And he was on that bridge as well. Yes. Who else? 
I know them two was there because of those one my uncle talked about. He always talked about Earl Royster. And when I was a kid, they always talked about the lynching up there. And, but uh, those are one alive that I know the name for sure. Okay. All right, now the one that was dead years ago, it was a James McIntyre. He was a member of the KKK. He was involved in hanging the boy over there, Cover Bridge. They, there was a tree out there, and he hung him out there and nothing. But he's dead. Junior Parker, though, is still alive. He's a member of the KKK. His daddy is dead and nothing, but he's a member. And uh, Mr. Parker, was, was he on the bridge as well? Well, had nobody said it, but he's okay. a member of the KKK. How old is he? I don't know. He's probably about 83. He's about okay. the same age as my uncle. And, that okay. and you got the... They got a book out there that that Brooks man supposedly wrote, and that thing he talked about things, but a lot of that in their lives, because they didn't mention all the names in Walden County. Right. You got uh, the Christian, they KKK member. Over there, Gratis, you got a man named Vivian Allen. He probably old enough to be there, but he hadn't, he don't talk about it. But he married, these people sort of married into a group. Vivian Allen, he married to Neil Jackson's sister, I believe. Ira Brelo was married to one of his sisters. Harry Brown, he married to a Jackson. They all kind of married into the family right now. But, and I know, I recall when I come back in 93, there was a man named Gary Spink who was and testified against these people for tax evasion. And next thing you know, he was over there on the tractor, and supposedly Neil Jackson found a tractor on top of him with a bush hog run over. But this man had been doing farm work all his life. He knew better of what to do, nothing like that. Um, you had Miller out there grad he lived right next to Robert Mitchell and that thing. He was a member because I always used to work for Robert Mitchell and people would talk about his members of the KKK and that thing, they'd get together. Neil Jackson's still a member. He claims he ain't, but he is and that thing. You've got a lot of members here and now they're getting quiet about it because when I went to that Sergeant Ferguson and gave him the name in 93, I was talking to Mike Pearson Brett, uh, he, Mike Pearson was a GPI. I made statements to him, and he was trying to arrest Frank and Thornton, just indict Frank and Thornton and Homer Reed for some stuff, and all of a sudden they had heart attacks and died. Palmer, they involved Lamar Palmer. He runs in that group and that thing. But had nobody told me he was there, but I remember him at the meeting with the plan. So you gave your, your documentation to Mr. Ferguson to Sergeant Ferguson. Right. Here lately, the last eight years, but back in 93 and 94, I went to a Mike Pearson. Did you, did you keep the, did you, did you keep <coughs> a copy keep of no your copy. documentation? No. Yes. I had a lot of paperwork in my trailer, and when I sold it, they told me to get off the property. They went over gotcha. there and took a lot of stuff. Gotcha. But, but um, if we need to reach you, what's the best way to reach you? Probably Mr. Howard. I'll stay right. in touch with him. I got a phone number, but they still monitor my calls. Got you. So Mr. Howard knows how to reach you. Yeah, I will make sure him. Okay. And the um, uh, wh when was the last time that you went to a, a Klan meeting? How many years were you going to Klan meeting? I, I remember that one time I mm -hmm. went up there, but when I live out there, gratis, that gratis store. Yeah. There was a guy there that was always put thing together named uh, Montgomery. And his name, first name, I can't think of his first name right now. But he was always instigating stuff and talking about what they're going to do. And they got, even got together when Obama was uh, running for office president. They were talking about hiring a hitman. They got on the computer and having to kill. And Vivian Allen was always standing down there and talking to him. You had a Hearn, uh, Hernan, a plumber, that would always sit and talk to that group. There were a bunch of them, I didn't know the names, I didn't know the faces, but they have them, sometimes they have them meeting out there in the parking lot. They all sit around and drink beer and talk about what they're going to do. Sometimes they go to an emirate house. 
like you go past Gratis Store, the back way to Ayrton. There was an emerald live out there in the White House on the left. He owned the farm. They go out there, his sons and they'll play and have a meeting right now. They say it's a party, but they all go out there and have a meeting, talk about what they're going to do. And when they found out that I was talking, so the, um, I guess uh, Alan Cook, the DA, was trying to find out who knew about it, nothing like that. And evidently, my attorney told somebody, I told him, because next thing I know, everybody in Walden County knew I was the one that knew about the KKK, who's alive. And people tried to bribe me. I've been to prison, a detention center. And they offered me money. Robert Mitchell offered me $250,000 to keep my mouth shut and walk away in 99. I told him I wouldn't do it. He said, you'll be dead before you ever testify. And there was a witness there named Larry Cole that I was at his house on Bryan Road when he called me. I got out of the detention center that night, and it would not an hour later, Robert Mitchell called me and told me that. Mm. And... You just got Al Yarborough, he's a member of it. Most of the police, their family, their daddies, you know, members, Mike Burke, nothing knew about it years ago. And his family, you got Shay. All these groups, they never did really talk about it, but other people talk about who were members, nothing like that around here. Right. The, um, is there anything else? Is there, is there anybody who claimed to have a weapon that was involved in the... They don't talk about no weapons. Mm -hmm. Most of them around here, they all... Charlie Pepper got, still got an old shotgun, I think. But even that house over there gratis, that they went over there, over there near... It, the house belonged to Harry Arnold Jr. Terry Briscoe claimed he called the FBI. I was the one that called the FBI and mm -hmm. told him about the house. Because he get walked away, he had a bunch of guns. The Briscoe was involved. He had a bunch of uh, Glenn Briscoe had a sawed-off shotgun, and he never would go into detail. He said there's a reason he kept it all the years, and he kept it hid. I don't know who he got it or who ended up got it now. But like I said my uncle got a shotgun about like that. You got a, a group. I, I worked at John Manville. I worked at Leggett and Platt, and a lot of the white people that were members, because they always hated black people, they get talking about it. And they all had a sawed-off shotgun. Most of them did. But the old shotguns, <coughs> I had some old pistols and up and I kept, but I got rid of all them. But the old-timers, the shotgun, most of them kept them, but they all pawned them. Because the old shotgun, they don't have no serial number on it, nothing like that, so they can sell it to what they want to, and you can't trace them down. But Robert Mitchell used to have some old shotgun, but he traded with, uh, back and forth to people. And I'll tell you, somebody that might have, uh, Ben Dinwiddie, the teacher, old damn social circle. He used to be a gunsmith in Monday. <coughs> that man that run that hardware store in Soap Circle, old man, he about 92 years old. I don't know if he's still alive or not. He used to talk about it. When I go Mr. in there. Wiley? Wiley? Yeah. 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 But so he Mr. Wiley? Yeah. Mr. Wiley used to talk about the, the Morris Ford Lynch? He'd get to talk about the man that talking about it need to keep his mouth shut every time I went in the store. <coughs> the Malcolms, they was involved. You got another man, possible he's still alive, that's Curtis McDougal, but he's about 92 or 93 years old, I think. And he's supposed to be in a nursing home in Atlanta. And you've got the Griffin, which is Curtis was married to Ruth McDougal, and she did, but Ruth McDougal's mother was alive when name was Griffin. And her husband was a member of it because I used to go over there and sit around there and talk about it. She had his suit and that thing, uh, what's called chest like thing. And she gave it to a boy or a man named Greg Kinney. He had the 
the Duke's outfit. And I saw I'm sorry, it. Had a, had, had a whose outfit? The Grand Wizards. Uh, Wizards. Uh, Wizards. Yeah. Gotcha. Because this was in 99 when I got out of detention center. I went and lived with this woman down there, and it was his brother that had the suit. And Mr. Griffin was his stepson, and he inherited nothing. And he had it out two or three times, holding it up, looking at it, nothing. And then you had a man, <coughs> uh, Steve Peters, used to be. I don't know if he got out of it. He was a member because he had the book back in December. And I kept telling Sergeant Ferguson that he had the book with all the information, all the names in it. And he gave it to a man named Randy Watkins. And they were hanging around the store there and other things. But Sergeant Ferguson went back and told these people what I was doing. And Randy Watkins supposedly gave it to his son who works at, uh, I believe, the penal home down here. His name is Tim, I believe. He's supposed to be the coroner or do the fits in the body up, that thing. But he's a Watkins. Mr. Uh, Watson, I, I wrote down the names. Uh, I was trying to capture the names of the people who you said were still alive, but I just want to make sure. I want to read these back to you and make sure that I got them. I got Roy Hester, uh, Lloyd Harris, Chester Harris, Glenn Briscoe. Glenn Briscoe, David. David Briscoe. No, 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 he's dead. Oh, oh, Glenn's he's dead. dead. Okay. okay. Jack Smith. He's dead. Earl Royster. He's alive. Harry Brown. He's alive. Curtis McDougal. He should be alive. Last I heard, he was in a nursing home in Atlanta. What about uh, Judge Sackrell was his last Sorrel. name? Sorrell. Sorrell. He's still alive, as far as I know now. He might have passed away, didn't he? No, he just resigned. But okay. he's a member. Uh, George Hearns. He's still around. Harry Arnold. Junior's around. Senior, I think, senior passed away, didn't he? I don't know. There is a Harry Arnold, one of the wealthiest white men in this county. Yeah, Harry Arnold, Arnold might be still alive. I don't know if he's junior, senior, he's senior or not. He's junior. He's junior. He's junior. He's a wealthy. Senior D. I don't know. Yeah, senior, senior D. Uh, junior. Okay. He, he's still alive. And, and, and junior, is he old enough to have been there? You think he was there? <laughs> yes, I think he is. Okay. Uh, Neil Jackson? Yeah. Jimmy Davis. Jimmy Davis alive, for sure. And Junior Parker. Junior Parker alive. Okay. Then there was a, a baker, but it didn't have a first name. Oh, uh, baker, baker. Baker. <coughs> George Baker. George Baker is dead, but George Baker Jr. is still alive. Everybody, when they passed away, they passed on everything to the kids. The books, everything go to the kids. They all met and make a decision if we'd be a member or not a member. But these people right here, back when I went forward, all of them was alive. Remember you were talking about this book? You said you had notes and documents, but somebody, you gave it to somebody. I gave it to Sergeant Ferguson. He's still alive? He's a young man, but he uh, he's supposed to be working for the city. I filed paperwork against him. He was he, the one that told them what you were doing. Yeah. He's got the book. He took the No, book. Uh, <coughs> Jack Peters run, uh, works at night at Peters Groceries. He the one that had to put book. The, Steve book. Peters. Steve, no, no, Steve. Your, your book. Your oh, book. Oh, I wrote it on paper. I gave it to Sergeant Ferguson. No, fine. That's the one where you had detailed documentation. Yeah, I wrote things down. Right. And some of it I left it at home. And I went off and left it, and I know everything going down because I went in there one day. I sold the place and it was a trailer and I went in there and all the stuff people done went through and got everything they wanted. Not the rest of the stuff in your house, but the the book you had Ferguson. Your your papers you gave to Ferguson. I gave some of the paper to yes. Ferguson. And, okay. and, and, is, and is he still on the force here? He they say he resigned. He's supposed to be working for the city. But I don't really know what they're doing because he says he's making more money now than he did before. And he knew I knew about the lynch and that thing. I was always going over there talking to him. He kept telling me to keep my mouth shut. There's another man runs a washer tear. 
he drives a blue Cadillac. I remember him because when I left Ferguson House, I can't think of his name, but he's old enough to be there. But I've seen that little emblem. He's a veteran. But the KKK carried that little paper with an emblem like a marksmanship badge in their wallet, and that signified they were a member of the KKK also. And the military used it too, saying you're a veteran, but the KKK used it too. And the um, why is what does this case bother you so much? I mean, you've had a lot of people ask you to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Why do you stay interested in it? Why? Yeah. Because I'm tired of. I'm tired of when you go through life, you live with lies, or you live with people talking about things that made a kid. And <coughs> back in '92, I went through a divorce. My daughter got molested. My mm -hmm. ex-wife, she started going back, boom, with drugs and that thing. And I come back down here. I worked with a TBI up there in Tennessee. They finally caught the people. And I come back to Georgia, and they got to talk about the same old thing. They got to talk about the, my uncle got to talk about the Moors boy and them cutting the baby. And I started telling them I was dating an African-American woman. All my kin people disowned me. Mm. They told me not to ever come around them again. Mm. Said, we'll kill you. Said, if you ever bring that woman to a house, we'll kill her. Mm. And I said, well, I said, I'll put a stop to this. And I started spending my own money and up I worked. I went around to people, listened to what they got to say. The drugs, I went to, people don't realize it. The local drug people, like Mike Burt, and there was a wolf. Randy Wolf used to be an investigator over there at Barrow County. I went to him with drug information. None of the people never got busted. The Connors, Bill Connor, never get busted for drugs. None of them did. I went to the man's unit over there at Barrow County and talked to them. Everybody started getting busted for the drugs. I went to East Metro here in 95 or 96. And they got the black whales all them. And Keith Glass tried to take control of that claim. He brought them in. I was the one that went to East Metro. I met with Chris Cannon. In 97 or 98, <coughs> I got set up. I got charged with a criminal trespass. I made bond. Uh, a friend of mine made bond for me, which was $65. I had the ticket criminal trespass. When I told him to come get me, I said, they're going to come up with something. Next thing I know, he come pick me up. They turn around and lock me up, ship me to Barrow County. I stayed down there Barrow County for, I don't know, about four months. They claimed they had a bench warrant. I was shackled, handcuffed to a drain in the floor, naked. Had to eat like a dog. They went in there with a fire thing, washed me off all day. The only day I could make calls is when these uh, rookies uh, come in, like at 5 o'clock in the morning. They let me slip and make a call, and I called Robert Mitchell. They finally got me out where I could have a hearing. And Keith Glass, the one that you mentioned, was the chief of police, and he right. was also in the Klan. Right. He took over. Yeah, he was the chief of police. He did it with the chief uh, Klan member. So, 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 are you motivated by? Your conscience, are you motivated by what they've done to you because of this girl you was talking to? I want it all over with. The okay. racism, I mean, I've been on the street, and, you know, I told people I've dated a black woman, and you can't get nothing. A white man goes around here and says he's dating a black woman or hanging around black people. You can't get no loan. You can't go to no bank, borrow money or nothing. They, they turn you down. And they make it excuses, but the money people right here, Robert Mitchell, Neil Jackson, Harry Arnold Jr., they own just about everything around here. And they still find out about that. You can't get no help around here. Could I ask you, how old are you right now? I'm 55. 55. And when this happened, how old were you? I wasn't born. You're you talking about born. the most born, oh, okay. right? Okay. And the baby that was uh, cut out, and given for adoption. Did anyone ever say 
who adopted the baby where they sent they, the baby? They took the baby to Atlanta. That's what my uncle told me. All the years, I remember every time I talked to him, he always said they cut the baby out, washed it off in the creek, and somebody took it to Atlanta. See, I got a daddy that was older than Charlie, but he died in prison when I was four years old or something, Tim Watson. So he was mean enough because he was racing. He beat on my mama. I know that. So <clears throat> all these people lived right around there, Moore's Ford area. My uncle didn't do So you don't, because now I'm, I'm kind of confused. I just want to be clear. You don't think that the baby was killed with the, with, with, when they when they killed no, they took the baby out. I, I said the same thing. I told my uncle, I said, uh, the woman with me was pregnant and everything, and the baby was killed. He cussed me, called me every name of the book. He said, don't call me a freaking liar, but he used the cuss word. He said, they cut the baby out. They washed it off in the creek and gave it to somebody, and they took it supposedly to Atlanta. He said, I'm not sure if they took it to Atlanta. All I know, they were supposed to take it to Atlanta. And, and, and your uncle, his point was that he was there, and, they, and right. he saw that's them right. do this. That's right. What was your uncle's name again? Charlie Pepper. Right. That's the point I got Now, there's another Charlie Pepper that won't live in wine. This man right here that lived on uh, Double Spring Road, I believe, like North Carolina Reservoir. On the left, and he got coon dogs. All right, so let's let's go through some of these folks, the ones who are alive. He's gonna tell you the name, and you tell us if you know anything about where they live, where they work, where we can find them. All right. Roy Hester. Uh, I think he still lives on Hester Town Road over here, don't he? Uh, don't, don't okay. There's a lot of Hesters out there. Yeah, Hester Town, yeah, big lot, family lot, of them. Yeah. Of them. yeah well, okay. And uh, but uh, Roy, but Roy Hester would be about eighty in his late eighties or early nineties. Yeah. All right. Lloyd Harris. Lloyd Harris did. Okay. Is that Chester Harrison? Chester Harris. Harris. I'm not. Is that one they got? One they call Claude. You got Claude Harris? No, Claude. Claude is. Yeah. Claude's still alive, as far as I know. And uh, where does say He's Claude Harrison or Harrison? Harris. And Claude Harris uh, lives in Bethlehem, I'm supposed to. Okay. George Baker? George Baker, did you? Uh, George Baker, Jr., rather. I'm sorry. George Baker, Jr., I think he's uh, over one of the banks. In that bank. He's still around. Uh, bank he's here in, in uh, Monroe? He's in Monroe. George okay. Baker, Jr., in Monroe. Jack Smith? He's the uh, Little Jack is still alive. So I need to put the juniors in here. Jack Look, Smith, Jr., rather. He lived going towards South Circle. There's a road right before you get to the bridge, you take a right. He got a farm out there on your left. I know where it's at, but. Harry Brown? Harry Brown. I know where your filling station is, that Brown Oil Company. I see him every day. He's alive. Curtis McDougal? Curtis McDougal spoke to him in Atlanta. He was with his sister. He spoke to him in a nursing home. You can go down there and talk to him. Uh, Shirley Richardson, then I jumped from Mobile Home Park, and she'll tell you which nursing home to see you. Judge Sorrell? Judge Sorrell spoke he's still alive. Where does he live? He used to live, uh, when you go into town, the first, second red light, you take a right. Is it about yeah, a utility light. <clears throat> Yeah, you take a right and go back down on the left. He did live right so there. So he's still right in uh, Monroe? Yes, sir. Okay. George Hearns? George Hearns is still alive. Um, you know where? He, he's from Monroe. I don't know exactly where he lives. Harry Arnold? Junior still alive. <coughs> senior, I think he's senior did. Uh, Neil Jackson? He's alive. But, but where does he live? That's all point. Neil Jackson lives out there. You go to Campton. You take a right. And you stay on that road. You'll see you go about three miles. You see a white fence and that thing. He's got a little white house right down the road. All right. So so he's in the town of Campton? He was. Which town Camp, is Campton. Campton. But he got Neil Jackson realty. He's a man okay. right there. Right. Jimmy Davis? Jimmy Davis. He spoke to me. He lived over there near the bridge. But uh, he got that work at that pawn shop in Madison. And then Junior Parker. 
in your park to live and camp. To, you go to camp and you take a left and you go about three miles and you'll see there'll be one one house here that was Arnie Parker lived, there's another house there that was Andy Abo lived, and then Junior got about the third or fourth house. So, so Kevin, how many people do we have who are still alive? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. All right. It sounds like there's some work we have to do. All right. Well, I'm we, 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 sure. And then let's and then let's wrap do up. Do you know Roy Holder? Holder still alive. I've seen him around, and I had never really talked to him, nothing like that. But he's associated with Neil Jackson, and Robert Mitchell. They all buddy buddies. And, and, and Roy, Roy Holder, do you know that he was there? On the, you know he was <coughs> I there? can't say because this okay. group, they just talk among themselves. But the rest of the folks who we went through, those are folks that, that you've heard were there on the bridge. Right. Now, there's a Bill Shea okay. and a John Shea. John Shea is a junior. And he would always go to the meetings over there gratis with those boys over right. there. The he used to clam meetings. Right. right. Vivian Allen's still alive now. He's old enough to be there. I see. But I had never heard. Right. And again, the, the rest of the folks, these folks who you heard were there. Yeah. It's enough right. yeah. for yeah. something to do with here. Right. Let me ask you also, did anyone else other than your uncle describe what happened on the bridge? Well, he the only one I went around, but when I was a kid, when everybody walked around in the yard, Bob Lorster, he was he was there and everything like that, but they all used to laugh and make fun of Earl Lorster, all of them did when I was growing up. And, like and did you talk to any blacks that may have been hiding and witnessed it? Or the Blackwell, see, that's something else. The Blackwell lived over there next to it when it took place. But I was told that's the reason they become the biggest drug dealers in Walden County because they knew information and they hid it. So the Blackwell, the police kept them, let them do what they would do mm. all the years. So the Blackwell now, they scared and there's a Dexter Blackwell, he tried to claim he knew everything. But what he did, Sergeant Ferguson went to him and told him because they was in jail and each one of them got out of jail early because they knew supposedly the name, and I was the one that knew the name, but Sergeant Ferguson went and told them who it was so they could cut a deal and get out of prison. <coughs> so they crooked. Gotcha. Do you know of any uh, whiteheads or palmers? Well, yeah, whiteheads still alive now. That's the whitehead, he lives out there, uh, Watkinville, I mean, but, but do you know that he was involved? Yeah, because I won't forget, I used to play these slot machine, And if he's still alive, I can't think of his first name, but I go to Statham to play those slot machines. He used to come over there, and he just he told me he just got out of prison. That one just got out of prison. He served time for murdering somebody, but he got out. And he talked about he regretted everything he'd done and everything like that. And that was still something he needed to take care of. So I don't know if he's still alive or not. But but he talked about being involved in, in the in He was, the he was a member of the KKK. I knew that from you. But, but was he involved in the Morse Ford? I living? can't say for sure because okay, he never gotcha. did come out. What about the Malcolms? The Malcolms, they... My uncle hung around them and that thing. You that one man, Charlie, Charlie Pepper hung around them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He could go hunting over there on that land. And, and, and uh, did you ever hear of any of the Malcolms being involved in this? <laughs> they were supposed to be involved. Okay. All right. The, uh, uh, is uh, Jack Malcolm the one that's still alive that you had on your list? I, I uh, one of them died. One of them died. Who was that again? Uh, the Malcolm the brothers. Got two. Well, they might be dead now because one of them died. I saw one at the post office right after I met with you. He told me I better keep my mouth shut. But Mr. Howard, you said that you were focused on the on the Malcolms. Which Malcolms are you focused on? Uh, Ralph. Ralph. Yeah. Ralph. 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 One of, one of them died. That might be one of them still alive. One of them supposed to be dead. All right. But but, are but you, one of them told me I better keep my mouth shut right after I met with Mr. Howard. I got you. And from your understanding, the Malcolms were involved. Right. All right. All right. All right.
I think we got an exhaustive list um, as exhaustive as we're, as we're going to get. So, sir, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to. But when I get my head together, I can move my